everybody. Um, I'm just getting my day started and um, managing all of the things that are going to happen um, to execute my day. Um, and I'm actually now sorting out what uh, daily content is looking like. I did a poll on my Instagram a couple of days ago and just inquiring about if people were interested in me doing weekly vlogs um and i got a really overwhelming response which is awesome but i realized that in order to have weekly vlogs i actually have to record content <laughs> on a more daily basis um which i've always struggled with um being consistent um on my uh, YouTube platform especially um, but I love YouTube content I love YouTube creators um, but I realized that you know people have asked um, historically you know when are you gonna start posting more you know we love to see your trips and that sort of a thing and I figured you know the way to make it more organic is just to kind of bring you along on a daily routine so when I do pop up with you know these vacations and stuff they're not just out of the blue and you hadn't heard from me in weeks um in months and in some cases years but yeah so I figured let me just go ahead and um start the content and you know that's what editing is for you know taking out the things that don't make sense or that are you know gratuitous or superfluous and all of those things um but on the onset you know we're up and moving this sunday morning getting ready for uh our sunday bible study and all of the other things that accompany um today actually it is the 31st today december 31st um so we do have some plans for this evening as well and hopefully i will take you guys along fellowship and do our Bible study and that is exactly what we're getting ready to do um, from all of my liquid preparations I think you can assess that on Sundays I fast um, I do a liquid fast I don't I fast and abstain from all food um, until sunset and that is just one of the commitments that I continue to make um, as I better myself so I'm getting ready to have Bible study with the family I'm getting ready to have Bible study with the family and then we will continue our day. So we read Numbers 20, what is this, Numbers 21 that we read? 22 we read last week. We read, no. oh Lord, help. We're on 23. Yes. Are you yes. sure? Pretty sure. We read 22 last week. No. We're either on 23 or 24. Oh my 23. gosh. No, we're 23, yeah. Okay, let's start here. Did anybody read the text? Nope. Yeah. 
didn't know. So I think anybody who didn't read the text should hush. In Numbers 22, we talked about Balak sending for Balaam mm -hmm. and Balaam behaving as a, essentially a prophet for hire. Yes. Or, you know, I guess in modern days, we would consider that fortune, a fortune teller or, I mean, maybe fortune teller, but even prophets for hire. Um, what do you mean? Written by, written by a people who pay, um, get payment for pro giving prophecy. Okay. But essentially, I think it, more commonly we see that in like people who fortune t do fortune telling and that sort of a thing. Okay. Um, what we did also identify was Balaam actually did have the gifting of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we talked about also too, I think what Romans eleven twenty nine, which talks about the gift of God comes without repentance. So even though he had this gift on his life, how he chose to use the gift was how essentially, you know, at the end of days or whatever, God was going to judge him. You know, God gives us all gifts. Um, you can use that, you know, you can use your gifting however you choose to use it, but God's going to, you know, assess your life. Here's a or like, you can come if you give me like a gift or here's a gift. Don't jack nothing up. <laughs> right. Because it's a lot of people. Yeah, like, you, it's right. so many people that you didn't even just try to go to war with them. You tried to get a, a curse because uh -huh. you, know, you didn't think you could see them in sure. a fight. But then, yeah, but to your point, like, this is, these are kingdoms, so there was still no diplomacy deployed, like, at all. So yeah. as a king, like, how, how do you get to that place where there's no consideration for civility yeah. amongst groups of people? Yeah, we just can't talk to them. We got to get them going. Like, that's a wild statement. Just, yeah, like, yeah. And they did try peacefully at first. Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, um, did I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but... In addition to the things that I had planned for today, I do have also just some self-care that I'm going to undertake. Um, I've got a couple of braids that I need to redo. Usually I do, I redo my top um, just so that they're kind of neat. And then I am going to do um, some a facial, um, do some <laughs> waxing. Um, so that's my process today. I'm probably not going to record the process only because that's kind of mundane and boring. Um, and if you follow me, you've kind of seen me at least do my rebraid process in another vlog some time ago. Um, so I'll check back in as soon as I'm done. Okay. Verses 1 to verse 7, okay? Now, we're going to see here in this particular instance of a generational curse where it's manufactured or produced or initiated, okay? through words now this is important because you see when it comes to generational curses or even generational blessings by default it indicates a beginning it's the root and the foundation in which this family stands on i did a teaching called faulty foundation which gives even more in depth in that so my foundation i'll just give an example when when one builds a house one of the most important parts of building that house is its foundation. Because whatever is built upon that foundation, the integrity of the foundation will sustain whatever is built upon that foundation. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> I hope everybody is doing well. Um, everything is great on my end. Um, every Everything is great on my end. Um, you know how you come down from New Year's Eve and it's kind of like, okay, nothing is different. Nothing has changed, but everything has changed. And that's okay, and that's kind of the plan and the goal. Um, not necessarily feeling it is okay. Um, but anywho, I am on my way to the grocery store. I went grocery shopping a couple of days ago and I either... I know I put, for instance, I know I put paper towels and stuff in my cart, but after I went and picked everything up, I didn't see it in there. And then, of course, when I looked at the receipt, it wasn't on there either. So I don't know if I deleted it or took it out or the store had it out of stock. Um, but anywho, I'm going to go pick that up and I'm going to do like a bone broth, um, kind of like a soup situation for my husband um 
I was telling you guys yesterday that I was fasting um, and I fast every Sunday and every Wednesday um, and he usually does that with me but I think as we go into the new year he's gonna do a 10 day fast so he's not eating any foods um, so I will be kind of doing like a bone broth for him um, and getting some stuff for some smoothies just so that he can have um, he'll be having a liquid diet but I just want to make sure he has what he needs um, prepping also for these um, college football playoffs very excited about that I'm also picking up some things to accompany and accommodate our football watching for the majority of this day um, I do also have some journaling that I need to do um, some prepping for the week as well as paying some of well not some of all of my bills I usually do that before the first now being separated from your money uh, as soon as you get it that's not fun um, so I withheld as long as I could but it's the first so I'm gonna go ahead and pay those bills and so it's a parking spot cool and you know just get ready for the week ahead um, I don't go back to work until Tuesday Jackson doesn't go back to school until Wednesday. EJ flies out tomorrow and Nevaeh does not go back to law school until next week. So we kind of have some shifting and moving going on in the house, which is okay. Jayon is actually driving back from Orlando tomorrow and he's going to meet Nevaeh in Charlotte. She's got an attorney reception that she's gonna attend. So a lot of moving pieces, a lot going on, but um, I do like our quiet chaos. Um, it's kind of, you know, we're a big family and always have been. So this is the, you know, the, these ebbs and flows have become customary for us. Um, and I enjoy it. I love that they're all here right now. Um, I'm gonna miss them when they're gone, but while they're here, I'm gonna love on them and uh, annoy them because that's what moms do. Anywho, going into store I will talk to you guys in a bit hey y'all I hope you're having a good day I have had a day <laughs> um, and actually I've not had a bad day uh, I am committed to confessing better over my days so that my mouth don't keep me from what's for me what are y'all doing these people are wilding at the bank anyway um yeah i've had a day today um just getting back in the swing of things um getting off of work and you know the, all of those things coming down right coming down from a busy day um, but yeah, my son is traveling. Um, he was going back to Michigan today and um, he was going back to school today. He's uh, in graduate school and I booked his ticket. Today's January 2nd. I booked his ticket, his holiday travel ticket for Christmas, the holiday break. I booked that ticket before Thanksgiving because I didn't want to think about it. Hey, your Thanksgiving travel, let's book it. Your Christmas travel, let's book it. Let's get it out the way. That way I'm not worried about it. We're booking while rates are low, relatively, right? Rates are low and yeah, because other stuff was going on. We get ready to do holiday shopping, all that stuff. I didn't want to have to contend also with travel. So <laughs> he left the house after, so I went to work this morning. He left after me, so he left the house around eight o'clock. His sister took him to the airport for an 11 o'clock flight. And you know, I always I always ins insist rather that they get to, I rather you just get to the airport early. It's also New Year's, so people are, also, you know, same mind frame as you, they're get, going back to where they came from. You don't want to have to deal with a bunch of, um, delay should there be a billion people at the airport so he gets there and you know i was just like keep me posted let me know everything's okay and of course i can see his booking and everything because i booked the trip i booked the trip it's on my american uh, excuse me american airlines account so about maybe 9 30 10 o'clock this morning he lets me know hey i got bumped from my flight what I got bumped from my flight. How did you get bumped from your flight, son? Because 
you, you weren't traveling standby. Your ticket and your seats and your luggage, everything is confirmed. It wasn't a matter of, you know, will you get a ticket in, hopefully you fit on the plane. Like we have confirmed seating, confirmed everything. So what do you mean you bumped, you got bumped off your flight? And he said, I got to the, you know, I got there to check in at the, and I said, but you checked in online. What are you talking about? And again, I couldn't make heads or tails of what he was saying. I was also at work, so I had to definitely be, you know, in code switch tips. You know, so I'm trying to tell him the things to say and everything. And he's just, you know, I could tell he was overwhelmed. And again, he's grown, so I, you know, there's only so much I could say anyway that he's going to, you know, affirm. And again, it'd be different if he never traveled, didn't know the ins and outs of, you know, all of that. So I just was making the making mention that, hey, but you, you know, typically you're not just bumped from a flight without compensation, and moreover, you're not bumped from a flight without first having been asked. And I said, so it doesn't sound like either of those two things have happened. So my concern is you know what has happened that has changed your ticketing did you accidentally change your flight um because what did happen i do know for sure is his original flight was delayed by an hour which in turn would have had him missing his connecting flight in philadelphia so i do know that happened so i just i wonder if he was doing some modification and didn't realize that he changed his original flights or something like that so long story short guys because it's a whole long story and it kind of warm I, I have the the beginnings of a migraine uh, this child of mine is still at the airport <laughs> and I'm co I'm coming home I'm coming home from work right now and he's not his flight is not leaving for another 40 minutes so I've <laughs> It's just one of those things. It's like, God, I'm not going to put my mouth on this situation because I want to be angry. I want to rail against the system. I want to roll my neck and let me speak to your manager. But the other part of it is I have been intentional coming into the new year, as have most of us, about things that we have to do and be better at. And I'm quick to uh, send a strongly worded message but in this instant this delay is inconvenient but what did it protect him from what did it alleviate what did it circumvent right so if i change my mindset to think that way i'm not mad i'm grateful and so that's what i choose to believe i choose to believe that the god i serve determined that in this instance in this moment he's going to derail the plans of the enemy and i'm about that life so also not me recording this whole video with the camera backwards <laughs> so again this is the kind of day i'm having so i will talk to y'all later because i'm going inside goodbye hey bud you excited you're going back to school no <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this, Jackson? I'm over here. <laughs> so where would you rather be? In my bed. Oh my gosh. You've been in your bed for like three weeks. Give me another one. <laughs> Give me another, another week. week. <laughs> so three weeks wasn't enough. Oh. Okay. Three weeks wasn't enough. Got it. I'm tired too. And I went to bed. I, got, I went to bed at a good time. I didn't couldn't sleep because I had to step and wait for EJ to call him. You know, he got home like 1.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, they opened the gate and everything. And we go around. Maybe three-point turn. Let's see how good my turn is. Oh, yeah. One... Two and three. Oh, that's a new design up there, bud. Yeah. That's nice. Oh yeah, this is the first time you've been back here. In three weeks. Yeah. That's way too. I saw it when we were turn left. Have a good day, baby. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Good. See you this afternoon. Alright.
So I'm working from home today. Um, things still feel a little chaotic only because, you know, just still getting in the, the, the swing of things. Um, so I'll just show you my working space while I'm here. Um, it's a little more condensed than when I work in the office, but I'm gonna get it done today because my youngest has to meet today. So I'm gonna make sure I knock everything out so I can get over to him. So part of my setup is my own Mac um, when I am either kind of, you know, kind of working through some things and maybe listening to a podcast or a vlog or something like that. But also I have um, my laptop and I have three, um, three monitors set up because obviously you can't have too many monitors when you are working from home. But also too, I work from my iPad. Um, and this is just kind of my planner and journal detail for the day that I use to just make sure that I'm keeping on task. Um, that's my digital planner, but I also have my work. And this is more for pers my personal digital planner. It does have my some work components to it. But then I have my ledger um, that I use for work as well, just to ensure that I am documenting my day-to-day -day duty so nobody catches me slipping and say I did not do something. I tick off everything that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I, it's a fully functioning process here for me. And I, you know, that's just what it is, guys. <laughs> so it is too cold to record. And look at the here. with no clothes on. Daddy, I was, I'm on, I'm recording. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, huh? No, we're about to go I inside. I was why you were holding it like that. Yeah. I was like, what's going on? Because those cameras are much better. But yeah, we're stop, you loser, <laughs> you winner. <laughs> She's a winner. She's a winner. Oh, that a couple people die. Um, Do you know who dies? Huh? Do you know who dies? I think Nanami dies. So that's gonna hurt my feelings. What shows us? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. What does that mean? Uh, in English, it translates to sorcerer fight. Of Is course. that what it means? See, now I gotta rebuke you both, and y'all gotta, um... I didn't know that's what it means. No, it, it doesn't. It is it is a show to be rebuked. The opening is sexy, though. <laughs> Why do you have that tied on your head? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Stop crying. I'm not crying no more. Was you good? You good? You need a minute. Is that a scrunchie around the Lowry's? Hold it up to the mirror, to the camera. Around your Lowry's, what's around the seasoning there? salt? Oh, it's it's um, a rubber band. <laughs> yeah, I got eyes. I got eyes. <laughs> what did you say? Eyes. He said Lowry. I was like, Ain't I that learning, what it is? I be learning new words. Every time. <laughs> oh my God. So, what do you call it? <laughs> seasoning. What, what is a Lowry? It's La the brand. The name. I think this has seasoning salt. What does it say? There's a little girl on it. What does it say? Morton. That's Morton's. Okay, I apologize. No wonder you were confused. He's like, yeah. Lowry's, what's that? <laughs> Whoosh. You're in my hat. Ugh. Child, are you okay? Maybe. It's no, really get off me. <laughs> my hat. That's what you get. I'm keeping it. Keeping it is crazy. Keeping it is crazy. I'm making, so what took me so e long to make my- e I'm all good now. That's all I needed. Y'all ah! y'all are menaces and you tagged him and you knew what you were doing. Y'all no, plotted. Y'all plotted this little girl. shenanigans. Girl. Don't girl me. It would be way worse. If you actually plotted yeah. it. Yeah. You guys are menaces and dangerous to society. Got so hey girl, hey. Um we haven't chatted in a while. I just want to check in really quickly. Um I haven't talked to y'all in, in maybe a day or two, um, and I was going to actually record earlier, but I was driving, and I started to realize that I really spent a lot of time in the car, and I started to notice that when every time I had a free moment to record or to kind of convey some thoughts, I was in the car. 
And I sat with that a little bit and I decided I didn't want to record in the car. Um, I wanted to utilize it as a place to be quiet. So that's just why I didn't record in the car today, but I did want, I was reflecting on something and I wanted to share it with you all as an encouragement, right? Um, so I know at the end of, you know, the calendar year, we're all in this mode where, you know, we're gonna do better, we're gonna be better. We are going to, you know, change certain things about our life or the what, you know, ways in which we uh, communicate with one another or engage with our families, cut off toxic relationships, stop being toxic ourselves in, in certain aspects. Um, and, you know, while all of that is good, I know it can be cyclical. Um, and there, there's a lot of times a, a, a lack of continuity because there are areas of our life where we just lack the discipline. We have great intentions, um, the initiative is there, but the carry through, the follow through is sometimes what's missing. Um, and I just wanted to be very intentional this year, you know, because again, we all do, you know, what are we gonna do new? What are we gonna change? You know, what are we going to uproot and exclude from our lives? What are we going to add? Um, in, in ways to enrich ourselves. And um, I want us to be very intentional um, about what that looks like for me, you know, every, every year, for, at least for the past, you know, I've, I've done some type of iteration in relation to New Year's resolutions. But as of recently, within the last five years, almost now, I've actually been, you know, doing annual goals. And, you know, one thing that I did notice was, especially during COVID, um, that was the year where I did not capitalize on any of the planning, goal setting for myself. Um, I was very complacent. And again, I think, <laughs> to be fair, um, not knowing what was happening during the pandemic um, was, uh, and, and witnessing, you know, the, the, the major losses that people were experiencing. I think that there was some trauma that year, but I could recognize, you know, as we transition into that new year, 21, and then into 22, that gap uh, from, from 20 to 22, that I was not capitalizing on goals the way that I had been previously. I had finished two books prior, um, and that window of time would have been ideal and perfect to finish a manuscript that I was already working on. Um, I was already working on a particular man manuscript having not finished my second book. Um, so like I had all of the momentum and I just, I let it get away. And then I started to get lethargic and then I started to, you know, claim writer's block. And when I say claim it, you know, your words are powerful. Um, as a writer, I understand the power of words to, you know, the intricacies and the weaving of storytelling through words. So equally, the words that we speak out of our mouth is, uh, is important to know the power that they have. Um, and so I used to, I was professing, oh, I have writer's block, I have writer's block. And while I was I was having moments where I was not I was not clear. The more I confessed that over myself, the more I found that I could not write. I did not have the grace to write. Um, and so much so that I just kind of, you know, I just put it away and did not even entertain the idea of writing, even though I had the story bottled up in me. I have drafts and, you know, rough drafts and all of that. Um, so I'm just saying all of that to say that in this season, and we always, you know, you you can tell how churchy somebody is <laughs> by, by, you know, the, the, the common phrases in this season. Oops, dropping my... I got to find my mount. Um, but in this season, right, um, I think it's just important that we be intentional about our plans, um, intentional about what we want, um, ensuring that the desires of our hearts match the desires of God. You know, he just was, he was encouraging me, you know, to do my part. And, you know, I do listen to ministries that talk about, you know, how to open up yourself for blessing. And that is through, you know, what you do for others, giving to the poor, giving to the less fortunate. And, you know, I've been very intentional about that so much so that I was going to share with you guys. And I, I, I kind of hesitated to do it because I was like, I don't want to 
one, sound preachy, but two, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. So I don't want to like create this whole scenario and then have no feedback. And that, again, even in that, that was a, a seed of doubt that I, sh I, I recognize now and have to, you know, just be very clear about repenting of. But I went to the grocery store early this week and it just was impressed upon my heart. I was, um, I, I'd seen this particular person in the store don't know them, but I, I, just, I, we'd passed in the aisle and everything. Um, and I, I, it was funny because I was a little bit annoyed with them because this particular person was kind of in the aisle in such a way that, you know, you kind of have to excuse me, you know, make a big production of getting past. So I was, you know, a little off put by that. Um, so anyway, we ultimately ended up being at the same register and they were in front of me and they were uh, going to pay for their groceries and um as the teller was cashing them out um the clerk rather they you know the prices and everything were coming up and the person noticed that something on their list to purchase uh was not the price that they thought it was so you know they made made sure that they alerted the cashier to this um, and the cashier, you know, made a note that, no, this is the actual price to which the person uh, reiterated, you know, the sale price says that it's this. Um, so the cashier did look it up and lo and behold, the sale had ended the day before. So this person could not get what they wanted for the particular, pr the, uh, the sale price. So they were actually going to ask the cashier to take these items off their bill. And so in right then, you know, there was just some, this something, uh, and it was, of course, the Holy Spirit, but there was this, this strong um, urge, and I just heard pay for it. And that, you know, I, not, not that I don't, you know, I'm not kind and I've not, you know, given someone money when they, you were, you know, have asked or, and I, I don't like using the term panhandle and that sort of a thing, because I don't want to assign a, you know, a, 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 a trait to people who are in need, um, especially people who really are um, in dire straits. Um, but again, I've never shied away from that when I've been led to do so. But in this moment, it was one of those things like do it, right? And so you're looking around like, who said that? Like, where is this coming from? But I didn't, I didn't hesitate and I didn't make a big deal or show about it. I just looked, I didn't even, I acknowledged the person, but I didn't look at them for it to be a, a conversation. I just looked at the cashier. I said, I got it. You know, just kind of being, you know, and then of course the person, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. And so I just, I did not relent because again, it had already been set into motion. There had already been this prior thing. And you know, that was a way for me to correct whatever, wherever my heart was um, in terms of an attitude toward this person. Um, so I, you know, I went ahead and I did it. Didn't make a big fuss about it. And, you know, of course they were grateful. And again, have a great day. And that's kind of where I didn't want it to be this big thing. I didn't want the people behind us to get wind of what was happening. And I'll just say that, you know, once I got my things and left, I sat in the car and that's when I was going to record. But then it was, you know, again, I was like, well, I don't want it to feel like, you know, I'm setting up this thing. And if it doesn't work out, um, it'll be weird. So I didn't. But I sat in the car just feeling this sense of just, you know, goodness. Right. So, you know. And then, you know, and I, I said, you know, Lord, you said this, you know, you said in your word, those who um, give to the less fortunate will never lack in Proverbs. Um, so, you know, again, I'm, I'm starting to confess this thing. And I'm like, it, one, it just made me feel good. But also, two, let me, you know, let me give the word back to God about, you know, what he said about our actions, you know, and the conditions of the blessing. So I just started confessing that knowing that, you know, there's some things I'm praying for, there's things I need a breakthrough in. And, you know, here, I'm gonna give your word back to you, Lord, like you tell us to do in Isaiah. So um, fast forward to today, I was at work and um, I was asked to um, meet with one of the senior VPs and they shared with me um, some really great news. Um, news that I, I was, preparing for in that, you know, you know how sometimes when you're in a position where you're like, you know, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this and I'm going to give them this reason. And these are the reasons why you should do X, Y, and Z. 
prepare, been preparing myself again with the whole attitude, right? I'm going <laughs> to, you know, tell them this and this and that. Um, and what was shared with me just exceeded my expectations. And so why am I telling you this? Because um, I just want to, I want to use this moment just to share with somebody who maybe just needs to hear that God's faithful. He really is. Um, he requires that we be obedient and he'll do the rest. People do like to say, you know, God will meet you where you are and, you know, God is love and all the, and, the, and all of those things are true, but he does require from us certain things. Um, if we're obedient to the word of God, then, and then there, those are the conditions for the things that he does to release the, the blessing. And you can find that in Deuteronomy 28. Um, and also, you know, there's some things that if you don't do, that there are some conditions um, in the latter part of Deuteronomy 28 as well. So I like to think about those things when I'm talking about, you know, planning for what I need and, you know, doing the work, but also to trust in God. And I just thought that was helpful to share with somebody because I love hearing other people's praise reports. And when somebody was, you know, kind of waiting and not knowing what was going to happen or where this thing was going to come from. And, you know, God jumps in right in the nick of time. And the thing about it is he's not jumping in anywhere. He's got plans for us. He's got dates established. He's waiting for us to catch up to him. Um, so hopefully that blesses somebody because like I could have turned a cartwheel today. And <laughs> um, I just thought it would be, it would be nice to share that with somebody. Cause again, I love it when people share, you know, the good news of the Lord, they're, you know, they're happy, um, situations as well. And I think that's, a, this is a safe space to do that. So, yeah, that's just me. That's where I am. I'm home now. I'm about to wash this makeup off this face, put this bonnet on cause I'm in the house. It's, it's dark 30. Um, it feels much later because, you know, we're in winter, but I'm ready to get in bed, read some books and maybe watch a little football. All right. Talk to y'all in a little bit. So good morning, I'm in my cute girl era this morning. However, I was gonna come in with such a, a, video, a video acknowledging that and the fire alarm is going on. So this video is paused until I can get situated this morning. Peace. Good morning y'all, I'm in my cute girl era this morning so I thought I'd share it with everybody. Another work day, but the benefit is it's the last work day, so we'll talk about that. It takes more than one player to bring them down, but Trout and Ryan said the Texans are a much better team than the one that lost to the Colts in week two, 31 to 20. They're going to have to show that here with a little bit of Trout. Hey, good morning, everybody. Can y'all like let's jump right into it can someone come over and help me take down all of my holiday stuff because we are 10 days into the new year and i'm over it <laughs> it's always fun putting it up but it is really challenging getting it back down and here's the thing i was uh fully intent to take it down last weekend but i got super busy had lots going on um i was shipping kids out of my home and I just never got around to it so I'm gonna do it this weekend but I thought I would you know gripe a little bit because as pretty as it is it's it's time to take it down and I think we are <laughs> the last of maybe four um neighbors on our particular street on our cul-de-sac that have um decorations still up now I'm not gonna be that one that's the last so yeah that's where we are um, I am intending to uh, close out this vlog soon. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of other content from earlier in the week only because, or later in last week, just because there's so much going on. I know uh, a couple days ago we talked about the national championship and I won't talk about that anymore because it didn't go according to plan for me at least, but you know, it is what it is. Um, the the winner was declared so that's just that but I don't think there's anything else about this particular uh this weekly vlog that went unaddressed or unanswered so this may just be a good place to close this vlog out and I hope that everyone is continuing to be well and I will talk to you guys soon <laughs>